Which Windows version is the best one? Oh boy, that's one heavy question to tackle. After all, Windows is the most used and probably the highest quality OS to date. date, 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 date. Well, the most popular is not always the highest quality it would seem. Nevertheless, Windows OS has been with me through thick and thin. So here I am, ready to tackle its entire history and finally find out which Windows version is the best. When Windows just started, and I mean just started, it came out as Windows 1.0 in 1985. To tell you the truth, the first version of Windows weren't true operating systems. They were operating environments instead, running on top of MS-DOS. While it was the first Microsoft OS to feature a graphic user interface, or GUI, I love that word, two years prior to this, Apple had already introduced Lisa, a computer with GUI. Yes, back in the day, Apple really did come out with the innovations, instead of stealing decades-old ideas from competitors. And now we have movies about them. In any case, the first version of Windows was nothing to write home about, and it didn't inspire a movie either. Even 2.0 and 3.0 that came out shortly after remained sluggish and complicated for users. The best tutorial Windows 3.0 offered in 1990 was a Solitaire. Yes, the game your grandparents love so much was introduced just to teach users how to drag and drop elements on the screen with a mouse. Believe it or not, the concept was extremely novel, following the command line interface of previous years. And if you are curious, the blue screen of death you saw in the beginning of the video originated from Windows NT 3.1, which was released in 1993. This is the first true B-Sod and the beginning of a long-running legacy. But it didn't last long enough to earn the title of the best Windows version. With Windows 95 coming out, the Windows OS evolution had finally begun. That's when the iconic start menu was introduced, revolutionizing the desktop experience. I wasn't using a PC that long ago, but let me tell you, it is impossible to imagine a modern OS that wouldn't inherit some elements of the start menu created with Windows 95. The Windows version was also the first one to follow the plug and play principle. Before that, you couldn't just plug your mouse and keyboard in and start working. But Windows 95 changed that. It was the first OS version to automatically detect and configure connected devices. Was it perfect at first? Well, if you're asking that, <laughs> you know nothing about Windows. It was far from optimal. Let's just say that. Where Microsoft famously excelled was marketing. The company licensed the song Start Me Up by Rolling Stones for their ad company, just to promote the start menu. I wish they'd done something similar for MS Office 1997, the first Office version ever to feature the best part of any Windows experience, Clippy. If you don't know who that is, a bow down to his greatness. Clippy walked so other digital assistants like Siri and Katana could run. But even then, Windows 95 was not the best. Better ones would follow. Whilst Windows 2000 should have been next, it is so heavily overshadowed by the legend that followed after it that I'm going to skip to it. That is right. Succeeding Windows 2000, Windows XP came out in 2001 and it changed everything. Right now, this Windows version is just a fond memory for many. After all, it's been over a decade since Microsoft stopped all support for it. Yet it's still running on a lot of shit. And for all those people, XP has shaped their experience, not just with computers, but with the internet as well. The famous Californian landscape on the desktop and the familiar vibe of the early age Internet Explorer UI, they have followed Windows users all the way to 2014. But Windows XP wasn't just a familiarity. It polished the start menu, updated the file manager, and established Microsoft as the top OS provider in the world. This is when PC and Windows became interchangeable. This is likely the best Windows version for an absolute majority of old school Windows users. But not for me. Windows XP was truly legendary, but I believe that the major reason it was considered the best for the longest time is because Windows Vista existed. 
This version of Windows first became accessible to global masses in 2007. This is a long jump. Previously, Microsoft have never waited so long to introduce a new iteration of a Windows OS. But it makes sense, you see. In 2004, the development of Windows Vista was reset mid-cycle, reportedly due to the project going off course. And let me tell you, if what we got was the project going on course, I am afraid to even imagine what it was like in development. Because when Windows Vista came out, it was destined for failure. Not even Lemon Lime Windows Vista Soda released to promote the OS could turn the tide. Windows Vista didn't have a majority of compatible drivers for hardware. Not just printers or scanners, but graphic cards and other internal elements as well. You could end up running on integrated graphics and without the internet just because Vista couldn't recognize your PC's internet configuration. And even if you had compatible hardware, it likely wasn't enough. Vista was extremely hardware demanding on release, severely slowing the system on older PCs down. The graphically intensive interface, Aero, and new architecture were too hungry for RAM and CPU performance. If that wasn't enough, Microsoft introduced user account control with Windows Vista. This feature aimed to make OS usage more secure, asking users for permission to open files, run applications, and sometimes even access pages online. Was it more secure? Sure. Was it infinitely more annoying? Oh, you have no idea. Needless to say, Windows Vista could never be the best Windows version. When Windows 7 came out, people were predictably wary. After all, Windows Vista was the first major failure from Microsoft. Many stuck to XP as a result, and when Windows 7 came out, XP was five years from complete end of service. But Windows 7 has quickly earned its place as the second best Windows version after XP. It didn't have the annoying quirks of Vista, and in the polished release, users found everything that made XP great just improved and to an even greater degree. To say that it was well received would be an understatement. With the DirectX 11 support, it was loved by gamers like myself, and the backward compatibility made it easy for XP users to switch. For the first time in years, it felt like Microsoft was focusing on user needs instead of pushing new features. Funny enough, Internally, Windows Vista was marked as Windows 6, and 7 was originally Windows 6.1. Just a small piece of trivia before we, uh, you know, end the fun once and for all. Windows 7 was the best Windows version for me, but I'm not going to end the video here. We still have the dark ages of Windows to go through. For all intent and purpose, Windows 8 was an abomination. Heavily criticized since the announcement, it was released Nevertheless, alongside Microsoft's latest and final attempt to conquer the mobile market, as you can guess, the attempt was futile. New Windows 8 was meant to bridge the gap between PCs, laptops, tablets, and mobile devices. Windows 8 featured UI taking inspiration from Android and iOS. But while the eyes of developers were on the mobile market, they failed to realize that their main audience didn't like change. So far, Windows 7, the version most closely replicated the user favorite Windows XP, was the company's most well-received product. Windows 8 didn't share its fate. Amongst the new UI, the confusing laptops with detachable touchscreens and mobile phones struggling to run Windows 8, users found themselves confused, lost, and more importantly, angry. Windows really pushed them to switch from older versions, which when they did, the new UI and features were more annoying and pointless than they imagined. I will not go further into it, but let me be clear, Windows 8 is the furthest from the best Windows version. And just like Windows 7 became the liberator, fixing the issues of Vista, Windows 10 was there to save people from 8. You see, Windows have fallen into this system, this pattern, if you like, of doing one good release, then one bad release. One good release, and then one bad release. XP, legendary. Vista, horrendous. Seven, almost as good as XP. Eight, literal vomit soup. Ten, pretty damn good. See where this is going? Windows 10 was hailed as the last version of Windows. 
a provable lie at this point, but most importantly, it backpedaled from the whole mobile design fiasco, allowing Windows 7 and 8 users to switch to 10 completely free. Windows 10 was marketed to be Windows as a service, promising continuous updates, new features, and endless support, instead of increasing iterations each year. Released in 2015, Windows 10 has lasted just as long. 10 years. It would enter its end of service stage in October of 2025. Very soon for the current me, marking the end of another Microsoft Lite. Windows 10 featured many new things. It revamped the antivirus protection software, changed the start menu to probably its best iteration yet, and overall provided the best performance Windows has ever offered. It's also the version that pestered me with blue screens of death more than any other. Still, it's likely the best version of Windows for a lot of modern users, and that's precisely why Windows 11 would never become one. When Windows 11 came out, it was already breaking Microsoft's promise. Even with a cleaner, more streamlined design, new animations, a small revamp of the start menu, and thematic app updates, Windows 11 was not what many users wanted. In the first place, they didn't want to switch again. At that point, it was six years after Windows 10 came out. Same age gap as between XP and Vista, and as if the history was repeating itself. Windows 11 was just offering things users didn't really find worth transitioning over. For once, the standard Home Edition made Microsoft accounts set up mandatory, making privacy-conscious users a little bit wary. Pre-installed apps were always useful only for a very minority, becoming a source of massive annoyance for literally everybody else, and 11 had the most of them. And as cool as getting a god mode in the OS is, I'm not creating a specifically named folder and most of the users won't. But most importantly for me at least, Windows 11 has abandoned the blue screen of death, making it black. As black and bleak as was the future of Windows 11 in my eyes. And it looked as if Microsoft saw that their latest product isn't getting as much traction as they wanted. Hence, we are now getting a surprise Windows 10 end of service this year, and users, for the first time in history of Windows OS, no longer have a choice. When Vista came knocking, XP was there to offer solace. When 8 was a disaster, 7 became our salvation. Now, when 11 is inevitable, there's no other alternative left to rely on. That's why I think even ages later, when Windows 12, or whatever new name it will be, comes out, Windows 11 would not be the best Windows for a majority of users. It is hard to love the thing you are forced to consume, regardless of how good it may be. But what do you think? Which version do you think is the best? Which one would you bring back if you had the chance? Let me know in the comments below. This topic is close to my heart, so I want to know what you guys think. Unless you say Vista, in which case you can just leave. Thanks for watching till the end. I hope this means you enjoyed the video, and in that case, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.